Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. Today I've got a fun little shaker card project. It seems kind of involved at first, but honestly, it's pretty simple. I mean, it's not wham, bam, thank you, ma'am simple, but I think when you see it all come together and the easy way to build the shaker, you might say, I could do that. If Kathy can do that, I can do that. To see my cute little love shaker that is going to be given to the hubs for Valentine's, check that off the list. Stick around, that card is coming up next. So here's a look at the supplies I'm going to use today. I've got this big old XOXO die, right? And I'm gonna cut this out of a panel of some Nina Solar White Classic Crest. I think I'm gonna make a shaker. I think, well, I don't think that's what I'm gonna do. I've got these really fun little uh, sassy sentiment strips. I'm not exactly sure what they're called. I should know, cause I designed them, but you know, I can't keep it all in here. But I am also going to incorporate this awesome Tossed Hearts Cling. So this is, this is gonna get a little involved, but I'm gonna try to keep it simple and I'm gonna have some inks that I'm gonna use and it's just, it could be a hot mess or it could be glorious. So let's get started. So we're gonna start out with stamping our, <laughs> just, that's good, that's not, oh my gosh, that is not good. We need our tape on that, let me pause. Okay, I just, <laughs> just stuck that on temporarily. I don't even know if that's gonna hold. I don't need it right now, but insert comes out, right? We're gonna take this out as well. And I'll keep that on to the side. Actually, I shouldn't have even done that. I'll, I'll fix that later. Just, that's neither here nor there. So here's how I like to use cling stamps. Take it out of the plastic or take it off the plastic backer. Place it right onto the platform inside, not this part, but this part. And then I just take my card, the card stock that I'm gonna use, and I guess, well, I'm, I'm probably gonna trim this down a tiny little bit, but I'm gonna put that right in the center and then add a little bit of tape to the top. And with something like this, I'll probably do the bottom too, like that, okay? So that I can pick it up with the door and we are going to be pressing this into the stamp. So I'm gonna take my powder tool here just to remove static and oil anywhere I've touched the paper, like that. I'm going to be using Versamark embossing ink and I'm going to ink this up really well. And I'm probably gonna stamp this a couple of times, I'm guessing, just to get a really good impression before I ink blend. So bringing the door down, grabbing my stamp press tool that I use, my, my Debbie tool, and press the paper into the stamp. Like that, now when I lift it up, paper stays exactly where it needs to be. And I can go ahead and just hit it one more time. Like that, for the best impression ever. Beauty of the Misty, right back into place. All right, now open this up. I will clean this off later. I'm not gonna spend time doing it right now because what I'm gonna do, let's see here. I'm gonna lift this up and try not to touch it too much. Get that tape off the back. Get that tape off the back. I wonder if there's a place that I could actually hold onto it with my, right there. That'll work, okay. And for this one, I'm gonna use Fine Detail Clear because I'm just going to be doing an emboss resist. So I'm trying to preserve this cute little heart pattern and I'm gonna ink blend over the top of it. I might take, I'm getting a little low on the powder. Kind of do the whole, the whole little guy comes out here. We'll just let it slide. We'll go like this. Let's see, see how that is now on there? Ooh, look at that. And that way the powder is gonna stay to keep all those heart areas open. And actually, let me see. Now I'm going to go ahead and melt this powder. I'm gonna filter this back in. I just do the folded paper. Sometimes it's messy, but honestly, most of the time it's fine. Sure, 
you lose a little you lose a little when you're pouring it back in and I just wipe it away with a Swiffer cloth. I'm going to bring in a Simon pad. I'm also going to just give that a little blow because I'm going to melt on this surface and this will protect my mat. The silicone positively everything tool will keep your surface safe and I want this to be kind of flat while I'm working my way around to melt the powder. Now, all you do is you just kind of tilt it and try to see, did you get it all? Is it shiny everywhere? There's a couple areas where it's not. These bigger images take time and you can go like that and go like, oh, there's a dull spot. Didn't melt the powder. Now let's take a look and see if it's all, there we go. See that shine? That is beautiful embossing that is going to protect that white cardstock underneath. All right, let's grab some ink colors. So I've got a few inks and I'm gonna start here with this color blush. And I think I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab my pink brush and just kind of clean it off or whatever was on there before. And where is my new favorite cloth? There we are, okay, gotta keep that, gotta keep that handy. I'm just gonna add some color. Right, I'm just gonna, actually let's pop that right there. Maybe it won't move, there we go. I'm just loading up my brush, right? And I think, I like using my stencil mat for this now because then I can, you know, just kind of come in here and take a look and maybe I wanna go in, a, in an order. I don't know, don't wanna go in an order. We'll see, we'll see. We're just gonna start right in here for now because I'm not 100% sure how I wanna do this little friend, okay? Just want to have some colorful bands. Oh, that is pretty. I'm going to add a little cheeky up top. Let's see here. Get that out of the way. We'll rub that off. Color is fantastic. Let's get that up here. All right, a little cheeky up there, right? We're just, we're just making a panel. My hair is everywhere. Okay, like that. A little there. See how it protects the white underneath? I really do have to get my hair out of there. It's everywhere. Uh, all right, get you in there a little. And maybe down here, just a little. Oh my goodness, there is hair everywhere. I, I'm so sorry, my friends. I wasn't, I really wasn't expecting to have this much hair. All right, moving cheeky out of the way. And I'm going to bring in pucker. This is my red color, okay? Not really sure how dark I wanna go, but you know, I wanna get in I want to get in some red and get in a little red in here. Now this one, oh, that is so pretty. Look at that. Got a little down here. Just kind of mixing it up a little. You know, maybe a little up here, a little darker. Just trying to make a little, just a little, just a little look. That's kind of cool. Let me wipe this down now and we'll figure out exactly where we need to Add a little more, take a little more off. Look how quick that is though. It's just such a quick way to take a clean stamp and bring in more color. All right, I'm gonna put Pucker away because that's a firecracker. And this friend, I think, well, maybe I'll come and get a little more cheeky, okay? And just kind of come in here like that. Okay. A little in there like that, okay? So it just has a little variation here and there, right? Nothing nothing too heroic. Just a pretty little heart blendy background. That's exactly what I wanted. And so, again, I'm gonna wipe, wipe this up. Like that. And now I am ready for die cutting. The next step is to cut the XOXO out. Now I've got it centered to the best of my ability. Little bit of tape to hold it into place. And let's pop that down and run it through. All right. Like that. And 
come back. And I think it's going to be perfect. All right, let's lift this out. Now I need to save all of the pieces, right? I need the center. I need both centers and actually I am going to set them aside on a piece of tape so I don't remember so that I don't remember so that I don't forget which one's top and which one's bottom. And now I have the, sh the, the panel is cut out. I can also save these. So I'm going to do that too. So let's set those aside because those can also be used. All right, for another project. But what I want to do next is just cut the thinnest little band so I can turn this into a shaker. I'm going to move this up here. Sometimes it's really hard for me to line this up on the die cut machine. So here we go. Side to side. Same side from X to O, top to bottom. How about that? How about that? Is that pretty centered? I think, I think we're going for it. So let's just do that. And now, taped into place, I'm gonna cut this panel out. Great. Now, this is the panel that is going to become my shaker. So let's go grab a few more things and continue. I've got some heat safe acetate. It doesn't matter that it's heat safe or not, but I had a little scrap in there and that little scrap is gonna fit pretty much right where I need it. So I don't think I need to cut another one. I've got my Simon Dot Runner here and what I'm gonna do, I think this will stay. I don't think I need to go with firmer adhesive because it's all going to get turned into a shaker. So let's see here. I'll grab another piece of scrap paper here. And I'm just going to add you know, a little, little, little dot runner. A little, little dot runner will do you like this. Right? Just kind of... Oh, I love that I can actually see what I'm doing. This is, this is thrilling. <laughs> hmm. Little in here, here, these little points. Just, you know, just a little, just a little dab and go. I think that is plenty. Now I'm gonna take you and go like that. Now, even though there's some already showing or dot runner left over, that is totally fine <laughs> because now I have my window to hold everything in. So now let's grab some foam tape to make the shaker. I'm gonna go around the edge and I think, well, here's what you can do, this is so great. I learned this probably from Christina Warner because she's a genius on many, many things, but you take your big piece of foam tape, right? And I'm just gonna kind of loosely figure out how to go, you know, mostly all the way around the card. So let's pretend like that's, yeah, that's probably good enough like that. Cut, okay. And then the easy, everything's sticking. The easiest way to do this is to just double it up here, right? Come right in here, press it together, and you are creating a malleable, doubled up foam strip. You just work your way all the way down, try to keep, it's not hard to line up, right? See, you just squish and go, squish and go. And here's the other thing that's kind of cool. The inside liner of the foam tape that is not sticky. Like the stick is on the other side. So make sure that's facing inside. I know people like to powder up the inside of their shakers too, so they don't get staticky. Sometimes I don't do that because I just don't want to have powder on my acetate. But now I have one long bendy little piece. See, it just comes off and just peel it back. Oh, well, I guess I could have been a little less aggressive there. Um, it's going to be super, super sticky. Trust me, it's gonna stick to everything. So you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. Although you know what? I didn't, re I guess it's sticking over here to the, to. I think with this, because it's not really needing the bend, I'm gonna cut as I go. I feel like I'm playing twister right now. Okay, cut. Oh, get out there. Okay, there's one edge of it. I'm gonna come over here. And all, all I want to do is just make sure it's butted up where it needs to be butted, like that. Yep. Okay, coming all the way down like that. Perfect. 
And the nice thing is too, this is when you fold it, it's narrow enough to fit into slots like this, right? So, and we might even take it to the next level. I'll show you. I don't know for sure if I'm gonna do it, but I might cut there. And we're coming up here for the last little hoo-ha. You just, you just wanna make sure that your sequins have no escape route. Yeah, this is not an escape room. We want it to be perfect. Oh, that is not one to cut. Perfectly lined up like that. There's no, there's no way they're getting out of there. And actually, it's very sticky. I don't even think I want to worry about separating the X's and the O's. No, this is fine. I think this is, well, but you know what would be nice? A little support can be beautiful. So here's what I will do. Cut you and cut this in half like this for a narrow piece. Although I wonder if this, if the, uh, they're probably gonna stick like crazy to this, but I don't, I don't care. I just want a little support in the middle. I think that'll be nice. And maybe that'll just sort of interrupt some of the flow of the sequins. I'll put one here too. You never know, you never know. I think that could be good like that. Can't really see that through. Yeah, no, that'll be fine. Okay, now let's get a panel for the backer. Let me let me cut another panel the same size using that same die. So I have this mix, and I want to I want to show it to you because it's I'm gonna move it away here so we don't stick to it too early. I don't know if this would work or not. There's some I could take some of the bigger hearts out. Okay, I'm gonna take those out because I think the bigger ones are just too dang big. But Although, I, yeah, the, the big ones are too big, but how fun is the rest of it with these smaller kind of funky hearts? Like, look at that. I don't know what this would look like in this card. I think some of it would definitely get um, stuck a little, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna place some of these hearts in here and take some of the bigger ones and maybe, oh, you gotta be careful though, because they do wanna stick. And I'd rather not with the purples, okay? So this is going to be a very personalized heart pattern. Get you in there too, with just reds and pinks. Here, is that making? And now let's get some of you guys out of here. The bigger ones, reds. I'll get you out because I don't want that. I don't want the iridescence. And then I think I'm just going to slide in some of these like that. That okay? It's funky. It is funky for sure. Little red hearts, get some of the pink hearts in there. I think I also wanna add confetti. All right, we're just gonna put in a few more to add a little, little extra sparkle. I, I think this is gonna be good. I don't know, could be dumb, could be fantastic. But I've used most of this heart pack and I think that's cute. Oh, <laughs> gosh, almost, uh, almost screwed the pooch on that one. Okay, now everything's in place. I'm gonna take this panel that I trimmed and I'm going to line it up and we are gonna put it right down as the back of the shaker. And yes, this is gonna make a bulky card. You know, this is no, this is no joke, right? We're getting, we're getting pretty darn serious here. And this is going to go onto the card itself, but check it out now. We, we have little friends. Now I have to put, Got to put the centers in, haven't done that yet, okay? The centers are gonna come back over here and I'm gonna take the letters and pop the letters back in because that is going to help me perfectly place the centers. So let's just pop those there for now. And again, I can just take a little, little dot runner, nothing, nothing fancy. But now which way did it go? Did it go that way or did it go that way? That way, I think it goes this way. So here's what I'm gonna do. Hold on, line you up. No, that's not right. I think I have it backwards. You know what, it doesn't even matter. Oh, well, yeah, it's fine. We're just doing this because that gets the center in perfectly. And then that, come on now, come on out. That just comes out like that, okay? So now you have your O1. We'll just do that too. It's just for placement. And even if I had these backwards, I don't think anyone's gonna care. I don't care. <laughs> do you care? I mean, you might, you might. I shouldn't, I shouldn't get too crazy here. All right, 
now you go well, line you up. Come on now. Actually, that looks backwards. Let's try it that way. Is that better? Yeah. No? Mm -hmm. Sure. You go in here, wiggle on over, and you come out like that. And now I have a little bit of party time. And yeah, they are going to get stuck in there. And I actually kind of like that. You know what I mean? Because I think having things move around, I think that's kind of cool. So let's get a card base prepped. So next we're gonna prep our card base. This is gonna be going on to a USA two. So we score our sheet of 11 by four and a quarter paper at five and a half. Okay. Got a nice fold down, grab my Teflon bone folder for this. Okay. There we go, nice crease. Now these tend to wanna to pop up and here's what I do. I, I tape them closed because if it's popping up, I can't see straight. And so this is just a thing I do. You can also use just some repositionable adhesive, right? And now we are gonna glue that little friend right on here. There's still gonna be greeting coming, but here's what we're gonna do. Where is my connect glue? So this is so great because the connect glue will allow you to just create this nice little thing. Just go all the way around. It's gonna hold it down perfectly. So you just kind of swirl it around. The other thing that's kind of nice about it is that it, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what I was gonna say. <laughs> I completely forgot. Okay, but, oh, it gives you play time and you want play time. So you're standing up. I'm gonna put that offset just a tiny bit because those lines throw me off. And see how I've got that nice little margin? Oh my gosh. And that will eliminate confusion, I think. Sometimes when you have these cards, right? And there, there's a lot going on and there's a lot of thickness to them because of the shaker element. Now it's less confusing because you can see the boundary of the card. I probably could have put more shaker elements in here, but you know what? I actually think that's funky and people aren't sure what's going on at first. So now we have to do a greeting. I'm going to pick a greeting from here. And this is what I don't, I don't know maybe want to snuggle and watch TV or even let's binge watch TV. I tell you what, that is literally me and my husband's life. We like, well, he doesn't like to binge watch, but we could do, if we did let's binge watch TV, I think that would be a really cute Valentine for him this year. What I'm going to do. I take my sentiment labels. Okay. This is one of my most used sets. And recently I had someone ask me about like, Kathy, how do you cut these out so easily? Well, if I were using a paper trimmer, and, and I will for part of it, but for this part, I just can't do it. Um, I don't have the ability to line things up perfectly. So when you use these, you're gonna get it right into place. See that? Well, I'm gonna pull it down a little bit so I can actually see what I'm doing. And tape it with some low tack tape so it doesn't shift. Okay, get that there too. I think, I think we're centered enough. And I'm gonna grab my die cut machine and now I'm gonna run this through. The beautiful thing is it's gonna give me a perfect evenly trimmed sentiment strip and the other strips really aren't affected. So I just think these sentiment labels are really smart design because this doesn't even stick to the paper and when you lift this up your other greetings are still there, ready to go. And then what I do is I just keep them all in a pocket. So you get little strips here and there. These ones go right back into the pocket and you get a lot of use out of these sentiment strips. The other thing that I love about them, you can foil them if foiling's your thing, but look at that perfect cut. No way I would have gotten that uh, <laughs> with just a paper trimmer. So bring in my mini trimmer you can do this on any paper trimmer, but this is my favorite way to trim them from side to side. Again, I don't have good freehand skills. So what I'll do is I'll just bring it right into my trimmer, whether it's the baby trimmer or the big trimmer or whatever you have, kind of line up that letter for this Tim Holtz mini trimmer. I just do this and cut. And then I'll flip it, move that letter into that same position, just right on the outside of that center on the guide, hold it, cut. And now I have a perfectly trimmed grating from side to side, just like that. 
And the next last step on those, because these are printed on white cardstock, right? This is called a reverse. And I've been asked, why can't you just print white ink on black cardstock? Well, you, you can't do that. And what I like to do is just sweep along with a dark marker along the edges, and that gives it the look of black core cardstock. I love doing this. Let me grab a strip of foam adhesive and we'll finish out the card. I didn't have my microphone on, so I'm adding my voiceover after the fact. You know, I tell you, it's always something. But I've got my little Darice foam strip, right? And I'm going to hold on to this with my reverse tweezers. And if you're wondering, where are those black tweezers from? Those are new. I bought some from Honey Bee Stamps, and I just wanted something that looked, I don't know, just a little different and was easy for me to distinguish from my other tweezers. And those I use for stickier things. So this is for my cleaner things. We're going to get that lined up. I brought in my Misty T-square ruler and just kind of, you know, hovering that right over where the X splits and the O splits. And actually I thought, well, maybe I'll bring it down a little more. But that, again, is why I like to have liquid adhesive on the foam tape because the foam tape, you know, it sticks where you put it but the liquid gives you a little bit of wiggle room. So let's binge watch TV. This just brings the right amount of sort of a pop to this design. Just double checking, is it straight? And coming up, coming up, yeah, it looks straight. I feel like the pattern was throwing my eye off a little bit, so I kept kind of coming down with it, but I think this looks pretty good. And that's the finished card project. I think this is a really funky shaker, but actually the steps were pretty simple, right? I mean, it was not that complicated, but look at how interesting that is. You got things shaking around, you got a fun little pattern, you got a nice white card base and a really funny greeting. I think my husband will love this card for Valentine's Day. You can find links to all the supplies I used in today's video below in the description box. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this inspires you to make some funky but simple shakers. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.